Hello YouTubers. Okay, this is a follow-up video covering some modifications that I've made to my uh, Kato SD80 Max since I've got them and completed them with sound. And uh, some visual changes along with some changes to the sound also. So the first thing, um, this is just looking at the modified version versus the kind of out-of-the-box Kato, which is the 7210 here on the right side is the factory version. And then 7216 here is the one with all of my revisions to it. So first off, you'll notice um, on the front ends of these here some differences. Uh, from the factory, uh, you can either move the MU hoses outside the plow or keep them in. Um, one thing with that is that they actually don't have silver tipped ends. So that's one thing that I did change here on mine as I made mine silver tipped. And I also put them through the plow. The other thing is... Um, this little MU cable here does not come with the model. Um, this is actually from an Atherin Genesis SD70 ACE because they actually give you two of these extra in the parts bag with one of those. So I happen to have some extras. And the nice thing is I'll be getting some more aces in the future from Atherin. So I'll be able to steal those and place them onto my other unit here once I do the same things. Um, also, one, a lot of other painted parts that I've done here is the uh, little chain area here. Out of the box, that's typically black. Um, I just changed that over to silver. Um, that's pretty much it on the front end. Oh yeah, one other thing here too is the coupler cut levers. Actually have a yellow tip on either side. Um, it's just plain black out of the box. This is an actual picture of the unit and you'll be able to see here in this area right here that's matching the exact spot here on this, which is the modified version. So just a little touch there that I did to make it a little more accurate and represent the real thing. Um, on the sides here, there's a lot of differences as well. Out of the box, uh, these actually don't have painted steps. So you can kind of see here that this whole entire area is pretty much all black. Um, the steps are actually supposed to be yellow. And also, um, I also painted pretty much all of the areas that were previously yellow here. Uh, it's a little bit hard to see, but the yellow is actually uh, not quite the right shade out of the box and just the regular plastic molded parts. So I actually went over all of those with Reefer Yellow from Polyscale. I don't know if I have the model number on here. Oh yeah, there it is. So that's the exact color that I used. Uh, the nice thing is that it does match a little bit better. You can notice that these here, it's actually a little bit darker than what the camera is showing there. But this actually very, very closely matches what the color is supposed to be. So again, all of these areas that were previously yellow, I've just gone over with the reefer yellow and painted them the proper color. And then also to paint the steps here, really all I did to do that is just a simple screwdriver. I don't know how well you can see that there. But pretty much I just dip the paint, and then as I'm going along on the side here, I just kind of dot along straight across here. See if I can zoom in here. But just these little areas, and I pretty much just tap along with this screw head here, and the result is actually pretty precise. I think I did a fairly good job on those. I mean, they pretty much look every bit as factory as a lot of the uh, other locomotives that I saw with that little touch there. Um, along the sides also, 
Yeah, and this is the unmodified version. There's really no bits of yellow whatsoever. So some changes that are made on the new one here that I've done is there's a little section here. I don't know if you can even see it. Oh, there we go. So these little steps right here, uh, those are actually supposed to be yellow. So I made the change to reflect that. And then also in the back here, this is the prototype photo here. Um, again, you have your MU cable here and then also those coupler cut levers also have those tops yellow as they are in the front. The other little difference is the uh, little grab irons on the side here. Out of the box, those are black. Um, there are some units that are painted in horse head that actually do have these yellow and some of them that are black. Um, I kind of like the yellow because it makes the detail pop out. Because um, on the factory version here, you can't even really tell that they're there. And then on my newer version here that I've done... sticks out a little bit more and again of course these steps here were painted and then also the railings here with the reefer yellow which is a darker kind of more orangish shade than what these are which is more like a lemon yellow not quite the right color and then of course here also in the back um, again no painted MU cables um, not the little red hosing there and again, still black for the little chain link there in the back. And then on the newer version that I've done here, made that little chain silver. And of course, added the little MU cable here. And silver tip my MU hoses. And of course, along with the uh, steps here also. And what I used to actually glue in that little red hosing there is actually this stuff here, which I've been using for a lot of projects lately. Uh, this is the Micro Crystal, uh, micro crystal Clear for Microscale. Um, it actually looks a lot like Elmer's glue. Nice thing is that if you mess up with it, you can simply peel it off and start over. So it's not permanent. It doesn't really screw up your paint. Um, when it dries, it's also clear. So doesn't really leave any glue residue so it's very nice and it's a little bit flexible too so if I was to bump into this little cable it's not going to break it off and it does give it a little bit of flex so that's pretty good and that's really what you want for that. So next one we're going to cover and that's pretty much it for the outside changes that I've done here. Uh, I'm going to go over some of the changes on the interior that I've done here in a moment. Okay, so we're inside the shell here, and this is uh, the version that's modified here with some changes. Uh, starting up front, out of the box, um, the catered ditch lights are basically one piece of light piping, which just leads up to the headlight. So the headlight actually controls both the ditch lights and also the uh, front headlight, um, which is fine, um, but you really, uh, to be accurate, you need the ditch lights to flash on F2. So that meant uh, cutting that and then actually... Each one of the light pipes here now has its own independent bulb, which is uh, in this heat shrink wrap here. Uh, this took a little bit of rearranging to make sure that there was enough clearance for the front truck to turn properly. Um, that took a little bit of work and wiggling everything exactly into place there. And then also there was a difference in color between the headlight and also the... Uh, uh, ditch lights here because obviously I had to put in brand new bulbs for those so in order to color match then I took off the factory Kato headlight and simply wired in the exact bulb that I'm using in the ditch light so the color matches perfectly between those now. Um, I wasn't originally happy with the uh, sound that I had in these. Um, this is part of the original setup here which I don't know how well you can see it.
move this over into better light here. There we go. Okay, so originally I was using two Zemo speakers back here. Um, I was using the, I think it's a 10 by 11 and the 10 by 15 speakers. And I would use one typically back here, and then the other one I've tried a numerous amount of locations. I've tried it in the radiator section. I've tried it in this little valley here. Um, I even had it kind of up further in the front end of it. And with each version, I actually had a lot of shell rattle, especially on the horn. So I had to end up turning the sound down. It kind of took away a lot of the effect of having two speakers in there. One of these alone just wasn't loud enough, I felt like. Um, it didn't really have as nice a bass as having two of them. Uh, these engines have a really deep rumble to them, so I like to recreate that sound a little more accurately by having the two speakers in here. Um, so the newer setup that I've gone to is actually not using the Zemo speakers anymore. I've actually changed to these TDS supersonic speakers, and there's two different sizes that I use. So uh, there's the mini, and then there's the small. And these are just a tad bigger than some of the Zemo speakers that I was using. And I've also changed a little bit my mounting locations. So actually now, this one is actually, the smaller one here is actually double-sided taped to the top of the rear truck. So the purpose of that is that it doesn't actually hit into the shell it's not hitting into the sill, which actually also would vibrate then onto the shell. So it's kind of isolated. It's kind of separate. And then on the back one here, I just have that one kind of two-sided taped to the sill. So this is the old Zemo. I'm actually going to replace that out with the bigger one since there is plenty of room back here for it. So that's going to replace the Zemo. And then this is the smaller one that's already in there. So... That setup should give me a little bit better sound volume-wise than what the Zemos had, and it also should be less rattle as well. Um, I've had much better results, especially with the second one being here on the top of the rear truck. Um, again, it's isolated, so there's not really any vibration there any longer. Um, you can get these TES supersonic speakers through a website called Train Tech, and I'll put up the link to that. Um, they're the only website I know that's selling these particular speakers. Um, very powerful for as small as they are, so I've been using them in a lot of my different projects, and I'm pretty happy with them. Um, I originally used the Zemos uh, because these are a little bit smaller for some of the more size-cramped installations, and I'll probably still continue to use my Zemos for that, but where space allows, I'll be definitely going with some of these TDSs. So I'll post that link here for you, but um, that pretty much covers it and all the modifications here. Still using the lock sound, so... Not much difference there um, versus a lot of my other projects. Typical lock sound select decoder that I like to use. Um, very, very easy to do on this engine. I'll probably also upgrade the rear tail light here to the same type of bulb that I use. Um, also about that bulb, the ones that I use... Too much light here. Are the uh, Digitrax, and that's the part number there. Um, I love these bulbs. Uh, they're brighter than almost anything else I've saw. Uh, the color is also kind of a nice white. Um, it's more of like a warm white. It's not an actual bright, pure white. I mean, it's not like this, uh, which is definitely not what you want. But uh, it's very prototypical looking. Um, probably could be a little bit oranger. Uh, but I really enjoy the fact that they're so bright. So... Very, very nice for that part, and that's pretty much what I use in all of my projects now. Um, so that's it for this one. So some simple, easy modifications that you can do to your SD80 Max. Um, this doesn't just apply to this particular model. Uh, the Conrail SD80 Max, your CSX80 Max, um, those are all made by Kato, and the internals are exactly the same. Also, the SD9043s, which are available in Union Pacific, uh, Canadian Pacific, CEFX, uh, I believe Rio Grande's another one. They actually share the exact same internal chassis. So I actually have a Canadian Pacific here, which is going to be getting the exact same modifications, um, painted steps um, where appropriate, adding some white uh, to be a little more accurate. So 
Very simple modifications, um, probably cost me less than $20 to do all of this, um, and that's just simply using spare parts I already had or just ordering some new speakers. So that's it for this one. Hope you found it useful.